Okay. Um, today I'm go, go, going to talk about this uh, section. Um, I think uh, for these uh, previous literatures, uh, how to live to 100 years. So uh, lifetime risk is another question we always focus uh, except, uh, except from the 10 years risk. So. Uh, I will uh, present our uh, my 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 uh, literature from this uh, aspect. The first is uh, we need for uh, individual risk assessment of CVD. So according to uh, GBD data, we can see in the past thirty years uh, life expectancy at birth increased globally. Um, in China, the life expectancy and health life expectancy also increased, and the level uh, are close to the average level of uh, developed countries. So um, with uh, increased life expectancy in most countries, uh, we uh, all focus on one question. Um, the question is, how can we improve our life in health? So. Um, so then, uh, how can we improve? Uh, the first uh, or, or the key strategy for prevention of uh, disease is uh, risk prediction, uh, like the prediction of our nature disaster, like a flood uh, or earthquakes. Uh, in fact, the risk prediction of patient is a routine work of clinical doctors is the basis for the treatment decision. So. How can we improve our life or uh, in healthy status? Uh, death is a major burden, and uh, CVD is the leading cause of death. Especially in China, this um, situation is uh, always burden. The morbidity and mortality linked to the CVD in China uh, have grown uh, progressively in the past uh, three or four years. Um, the there, uh, we have numerous patients in China, and the, the CVD is increased repeatedly with high fertility rate and a huge enormous uh, burden. How can we prevent it? The risk, uh, the risk assessment uh, is key strategy, but the development of CVD is the result of long-term exposure to multiple risk factors like gene variants, uh, environmental factors, and LDL cholesterol, blood pressure, diabetes. So how can we? Attention should be uh, pay uh, attention should pay should be pay attention to the comprehensive. Uh, assessment of overall cardiovascular risk. Risk assessment of CVD refers to predicting the probability or risk that an acute event will occur within a specific period in the future time, like five years, 10 years, or the rest, uh, rest of life. So it's based on the levels or combinations of multiple risk factors. The overall risk assessment is uh, a basis for the decision making for the prevention of control and of CVD. So guidelines recommend the initiation and the target level of intervention should be determined according to the individual's overall risk stratification for CVD. How can we do the assessment? How can we make the true risk assessment? Uh, the risk assessment is based on a messy mental model. Uh, we can use uh, using we can use the long-term cohort study. In in this data, we can obtain the um, specific group of participants with long-term uh, follow-up. We can obtain their uh, average of the cohort population at year or their survival or disease-free probab probability. And we can also obtain the average level of risk factor as the baseline, like age, sex, smoke, blood pressure, diabetes, uh, glucose, and even gene variants. So uh, we also, uh, uh, based on the long-term cohort study, to explore the contribution of these risk factors uh, 
of the to the disease disease incidence um, and uh, calculate the regression coefficients. So uh, in conjunction with this parameter, we can enter the uh, mathematical model to uh, estimate the risk of CVD incidence where CVD dies over a period of time, Egypt 10 years. This is the predictor probability. In addition to this mathematical model, uh, researchers have also developed simple tools like um, risk counters and the risk chart. The widely used uh, cardiovascular risk assessment tools are mainly for predicting five years or 10 years, this short term risk, like Framingham risk goal, uh, systematic coronary risk evaluation and the PCE equations. Uh, in addition, Chinese researchers have also um, estab uh, established the, the uh, algorithm to the Chinese population to predict the uh, um, short-term risk. However, as we all know, when the turn uh, the turn year uh, CVD risk is uh, is substantially influenced by the age, uh, as we sh can see in the score chart, we can see almost all young and middle-aged individuals belongs to the low risk as the green green chart. Um, so um, this young and middle-aged individuals are likely to uh, exposure long time to multiple risk factors across their lifespan. So uh, this will lead them to increase long-term CVD, CVD risk. So how can we uh, choose this? And uh, um, if we alone use the 10-year CVD risk, we will miss the opportunity for, of the early prevention to these young and middle-aged uh, individuals. So the concept of lifetime risk has been uh, proposed. What is lifetime risk and how to assess? So as early as uh, 1992, 1999, Professor Donut have developed a, a lifetime risk of developing a CHD. Lifetime risk uh, uh, refers to the probability of a person developing a, a disease at some time during their uh, remaining lifetimes after counting uh, for other risk of dies. So um, the lifetime risk is different from the turn uh, the turn time ten years risk is use age as the time scale and uh, is calculated. Uh, um, actual observed risk of individuals. So we can uh, generally use the modified Kaplan-Meier method after a uh, fine gray competing risk adjustment to calculate the individual's lifetime of a uh, specific disease. Professor Barry used the uh, cardiovascular lifetime risk polling project, including eight cohort uh, to calculate the lifetime risk of CVD in American adults. Uh, he found that a participant at 55 years of age, like this one, um, if the patients with, all, with optimal all of all risk factors, they will have substantially lower uh, lifetime risk of four point, four point up to the uh, age of 90. However, if patients have uh, two or more major risk factors like uh, high, high TC, high blood pressure, smoke, or diabetes, he will have uh, eight to um, six to eight higher than these ones. So, moreover, many young and uh, many young men and women have low short-term and high lifetime risk. As the uh, cardiac study found that uh, low short-term and uh, high lifetime risk uh, represent 50% of these participants, uh, 32 to 47 years uh, of age at uh, year 50. So uh, this finding suggests that the lifetime risk may help to uh, early identify at risk individuals. 
In 2050, our team using um, Chinese population, a cohort from Chinese population, uh, for, uh, for the first time to calculate uh, lifetime risk of CVD in our Chinese population. We can see in our study, um, the men and women at age uh, 30, 35, uh, the lifetime risk were uh, 24 or 20 respectively up to age of uh, 18. And uh, as, as the American study found that uh, a, very low, a very low lifetime risk was also found in individuals with optimal life, uh, profile of risk factors. This may modify the effect of aging. Furthermore, because uh, stroke is a major cause of premature death in China, so we further to calculate the lifetime risk of stroke in young and middle aged in Chinese population. Uh, we also found that the pa participant aged 35 to 40 years, the mean lifetime stroke risk was 18 and 40 percent in men and women, and we further found that blood pressure most effectively discriminate the lifetime stroke risk. Uh, this finding is different from Framingham study. Uh, he, uh, they found that diabetes is the uh, most uh, key risk factors to discriminate the lifetime CVD uh, risk in American adults. So recently, the GBD 2060 lifetime risk of stroke collaborators also report the global, regional, and the country specific lifetime risk of stroke from 1990 to uh, 2060. They found that the global lifetime risk of stroke is um, two, 20, 24%. Um, uh, furthermore, they found that uh, there were uh, substantially geographic variations of the uh, lifetime stroke risk. Uh, in 2060, the greatest lifetime stroke risk were in East Asia, especially in China. Uh, the uh, lifetime risk of stroke is 39% uh, in China. And uh, from the 20, uh, 1990 to uh, 2060, lifetime risk of stroke rose uh, ex uh, substantially, especially in, also in East Asia. So estimate of the lifetime risks are important for understanding the uh, future population burden of specific disease, and it's better to promote the public education strategies. Uh, particular when consulting young adults ab about the ways to reduce their risk of future disease much later in life. It also better to health care plan pre uh, planning and guarding the impact of disease prevention chappings. But how can we use the lifetime risk in clinical practice? In recent years, uh, the lifetime risk assessment have been introduced uh, in the guidelines for CVD prevention and the control in Europe, uh, United States, and in China. For example, um, the recent published Chinese guideline on the prevention, primary prevention of CVD, uh, recommend that the risk of CVD is uh, uh, is evaluated by this algorithm. Uh, this algorithm includes three steps. The first step is to identify high-risk individuals. If individual we, uh, meeting um, diabetes, high LDLC, and uh, CKD at stage three or four, they will be directly classified as high-risk. With need, without need for evaluation of 10-year risk or lifetime risk. The second step is uh, to evaluate 10 um, years risk, uh, except from the above mentioned these patients. Uh, other patients should evaluate the 10-year risk following this algorithm. The key risk factor is uh, LDLC or cholesterol and hypertension. In addition to the smoke, low, L low HDLC and age, uh, individuals can be classified into three levels, low risk, medium risk, and high risk. 
So the second, the third step is lifetime risk assessment. If the patients have have medium risk of 10 year risk, medium life of 10 year risk, and the, their age is less than 55 years, they will be uh, evaluate the lifetime risk. And uh, uh, if patients with any of the two of the risk factors, uh, like uh, stage two hypertension, high non-HDLC, low HDLC, and uh, obesity smoking, they will be classified as high risk for CVD. These high risk individuals uh, are more likely to benefit from the preventive strategy. So traditionally, the um, pharmacotherapy is based on five to 10 year CVD risk. Uh, because uh, this relatively uh, short-term uh, CVD win uh, risk window uh, are used primarily because the RCT are most conducted within the five years duration only. So how can we um, evaluate the long-term treatment effect? So recent researchers uh, developed new models to assess it, like the live CVD model. Researchers using um, uh, 60,000 60, apparently health people and uh, um, using multiple predictors to predict the uh, CVD incidence. They use the method to uh, mo model development two methods. Uh, the first is they they construct two com complementary fine degree competing risk adjusted to uh, left truncated function. They also in conjunction with therapy effect. So they construct a lifetime model for prognosis and the therapy effect. As shown in this finger, uh, two persons uh, with uh, 45 years old and 70 years old uh, they have identical risk factors under the lipid and the blood pressure lowering therapies. Young, younger people have a smaller 10 year absolute risk reduction, but a greater gain in life years free of CVD. So using this lifetime, ri lifetime risk model, uh, we can increase insight into uh, therapy benefit from the um, complementary use of 10 year and lifetime estimate, and it may uh, facilitate individual med uh, medicines and doctor patient communication. So a brief summary, lifetime risk assessment of CVD provides a basis for risk assessment, especially in young and middle aged population. It is uh, important to implement to the 10 year CVD risk assessment is beneficial for high risk strategy and the population strategy for CVD prevention. It can be used to identify young people with uh, low short term risk but high lifetime risk can also increase young people's attention to the risk of CVD and uh, is of particular importance for mon monitoring individuals to improve their life lifestyle and enhance treatment compliance. Thank you very much for your attention.